And as soon as they put him on my chest, I was expecting to feel, you know, the serendipity of the moment as people, they are no longer aware of what's going on down there. I still felt everything. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Pop and Shay. Bet you knew that already. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be going through a thorough breakdown of my labor and delivery story. Um, because in the video that I had originally posted, if you haven't watched that, go watch that one first and then come back to this one. In that video, I didn't really give you a walkthrough of what actually went into my induction. So we'll be going over that today. So my induction was scheduled for Monday the 18th at 8 p.m. So we got to the hospital around 8.20, I would say. And all we had to do was go to registration, check in, give our insurance, all the boring stuff. And then by, I would say by nine o'clock, we were in our labor and delivery room. I got undressed, gave a urine sample, and waited for my midwife to come in and check on me. When she came in, it was around 9.30 by that point. She came in, she went over what the plan was. Um, the plan was to give me Cervidil, which is a insert, kind of like a tampon, but not as big. Um, it is about that big and it has a string attached to it, like a tampon. And on the actual patch part is a medicine, which is the Cervidil. They wrap the string around and insert it next to your cervix so that it can help with the dilation. They do that instead of the, um, what is it called? Pitocin? No, Cervidil and Cytotec. They do that instead of Cytotec, um, which everyone knows is like the more aggressive one. So we went with the Cervidil. I think, can you fact check me and make sure that it's Cervidil? What is it? What am I looking up even? Cervidil. <laughs> C-E-R-V-I-D-I-L. Cervidil. Yeah. It looks like what you're describing. Yeah, that's what they gave me. Okay, and Cytotec is the other one, right? Okay, great. Right. So, so yeah, we started my induction around the, by the time she inserted it, it was 10 o'clock on the dot. So at 10 o'clock is when my induction technically started. 10 o'clock a Monday night. So they left me on that and started me on Pitocin at the same time. Right? Right. So I have to fact check with Serena. She's behind the scenes. <laughs> because I, I remember everything, but it's still kind of like, wait, was that that day? Because my day started blending at one point. So... 10 p.m. Monday is when the side of the Cervidil mm -hmm. was inserted and Pitocin, Pitocin was started. I was four, no, I was one centimeter, one and a half, and a half. when I went to the hospital originally. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was like, you can sleep through it. It might be a little crampy, but it's nothing that's going to be too intense for you. So that's what they did. They left me alone. I didn't have any cervical checks throughout the night. And then... By 10 p.m., it was a 12-hour dosage. So by 10, 10 a.m. on Tuesday is when the next midwife came in, checked me, and I was two centimeters. Yeah, I was only two. So the Cervidil didn't do much, but it did make my cervix softer. So they said, okay, let's up the Pitocin one more dose. So the Pitocin was upped, and she put the... Um, balloon catheter in at that point so the balloon catheter was inserted all this is around 10 a.m still uh, she came in did the balloon left me there for about i would say a few hours i'm not sure how long how many hours but it was a few hours um that she left the bulb in and she was like you can still move around you can walk you can do whatever you want i didn't i didn't want to do anything <laughs> so i was still in bed um, and just let the balloon do its thing and the nurse would come in she tug on it at that point I started feeling a little crampy um, and so she was like, okay let me tug on it and make sure it hasn't like fallen out because if it falls out that means that you're ready um, and so she tugged on it and as soon as she tugged on it I was like 
something is wrong like it just felt like it felt like pressure of course because they felt they filled the balloon with saline and so the balloon was like a um, peanut shape once they filled it up so that it can cause pressure on the inside of your cervix and on the outside of the cervix so that it's like counteracting pressure to make you dilate more so when she tugged on it it felt like it came th like the top bubble came through the cervix and I said it needs to come out now like I I can't like close my legs um I need you to get it out and so she took it out and she, and immediately I felt like okay like it was like contractions <laughs> And so she was like, let's get the midwife to check you. Midwife came in, checked me. I was four centimeters at this time. So with that, she was like, okay, let's go ahead and um, break your water. Why not? I said, let's do it. By this time, it was, I would say, it was past lunch. I remember they came and brought me lunch. So it was probably around two o'clock-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The water was already broke by the time everybody started. Yeah, everybody was there. So it was in the afternoon at some point. Mm -hmm. um, it broke my waters. And that was a very interesting feeling. Um, it wasn't like how I've heard people describe it as like kind of inappropriate. Orgasmic. Yeah, orgasmic, if you will. <laughs> it didn't feel like that at all. Probably because it was like um, force, force, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a naturally popping, but it literally felt like she just took a hook and just and suddenly water. It was very warm, of course. And I said that I remember saying mm -hmm. that and she was like, yeah, perfect. 98 degrees like you. What did you expect? So, yeah, it just came right out. And I remember um, I had went to the bathroom after that and I could see like there was like some streaking going on and she was like, that's to be expected. I stripped your membranes and broke your water. So you're, you're just really flowing now. I said, no problem. So she said, okay, hon, we're just going to leave you like this. Still on Pitocin at this point. And I had gotten some pain medicine through my IV because of the contractions. They were pretty intense after four centimeters, um, to where I was like, having to breathe through them, like in through your nose, out through your mouth, breathe it out. It was pretty intense, but nothing to where I was like, yeah, I need that epidural, okay? Um, so yeah, I was able to still lay down, still have conversation. I, at that point, I was still trying to like be on the ball. I was trying to do my little hip swaying motion on the edge of the bed. Still pretty active, but not doing too much. I didn't walk around the hospital or anything. So, it comes to about, I would say around 10 or 11 at night, they put me on the peanut ball <laughs> and that ball. <laughs> so the purpose of it is to uh, allow your cervix to open and your pelvis as well to get in position for the baby's head to drop into the birth canal. Um, and so they laid me on my left side, put the ball in between my legs. Cause at this point they were like, we got to get you going. Cause you're still at four centimeters lady. Something is not adding up. So we put the peanut ball on. I'm laying there. I remember I'm holding on, I'm holding on to the railing of the bay and I'm just like, Hmm.
Because I'm like, something, something is changing inside me. And so, I come to a point where I can no longer tolerate the peanut ball. I said, whatever is on my legs, get it off. And whatever the ball is doing, get it out of me. I need to be free right now. But I couldn't turn on my own because I felt so much pressure. That's the only way I could describe it as pressure. It Like, I literally could visualize my birth canal in it, <laughs> head being in it. Okay? So, I said, where is the nurse? I said, Haley, get in here. Mm -hmm. Haley comes. And she's like... Okay, let's see where you're at. I'm sure, you know, it's only been an hour since we put you on the ball. So it had to have been 10 o'clock. Because that's when they kicked everybody out. Mm -hmm. Everyone was there, okay? <laughs> My parents, his mom came. She didn't come till like 7 o'clock, Quan's mom. So by the time she came is when things really started going. Okay? So she was like, you've only been on the ball for like an hour, ma'am. Like, it's supposed to feel like that. And that means you're progressing. But if you want me to check you, I will. And I said, yeah, Haley, please check. Check down there because I, I feel it. And she was like, okay. So, and she was just an RN. So she went in there. She was like, I would say you're like an eight. I said, Haley, <laughs> you said I was a four. When did I jump to eight? She said, I guess within the hour, you just, the ball really opened you up. And at that point, I'm holding both the bars and I'm like, hmm. Like, I, try, I kept trying to breathe down because that's what they kept telling me to do. I don't know what that means. So all I could do was just <laughs> make my voice deep. <laughs> and for some reason, mentally, that that's what they were telling me to do. But it was not. I came to find out. Um, <laughs> so what else happened? Okay, so that was 10 o'clock. Um, 10 o'clock is when she checked me. By 11 is when my midwife finally came in. And I'm sitting there like, hey, she said I was an eight. What's happening now? Because the contractions are every two minutes on the dot. Every two minutes. I'm feeling them. You can see them on the monitor going to, what was it, like 104, 98. Like, you could see them all peaking. It was so bad. So, but still, didn't get an epidural at this point. But they kept coming. I was like, I might need to get it. I might need to get it. Haley, you might have to give it to me. And she was like, I don't know. You said you wanted to feel it. Uh -huh. I said, Haley, I don't pay you for your opinion. Thank you. And so she's like, because on the whiteboard, they put goals for today as a natural labor. Because I dare open my mouth and say that I had a birth plan. No, people... They made me stick to it. Okay, so 11 o'clock, my, my midwife comes in and she's like, okay, yeah, I feel, I agree with Haley. You're about eight to nine, eight to nine-ish. I said, okay, so we're pushing. I know y'all say to get to 10, but we're pushing. And she said, well, no, because I have something called an anterior, uh, anterior lip, which to my understanding, it has something to do with the shape of my cervix. I don't know, fact check that, but... Because I had an interior lip, she had to keep checking me to make sure that it has, like, moved out the way with my dilation. That's my understanding of what happened. And so, I had to wait to push. It was 11 o'clock. Everybody had made it to their homes that had came to visit me. So, at that point, it was just Serena, Quan's mom, and Quan in the room. Um, and they were just, they started putting out their lab coats. They said, we're going we're gonna to have this baby soon. Um, so she had directed Serena to be on my left side and hold my thigh back and Quan's mom to be on my right side and hold my thigh back with my legs in the forceps. And that's what you all see in the video, me getting ready to push. Um, and yeah, so I asked for an epidural on the set. <laughs> I, I said, I think I, I think I want it. I'm scared of a needle in my back. But this pain will make me fear nothing else. And she said, if I give you an epidural, the baby's just falling out now at this point. You're too far ahead. And I said, okay, God, you're funny. Because I've been saying, you know, natural me, you know. I'll take an IV pain med and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I ended up being natural. 
Um, and while I was pushing, um, it only took 20 minutes for me to push him out. Um, and that was with a lot of, a lot of ups and downs during the pushing. Um, because they kept saying, push like you're pooping, and I don't do that. So, it was a learning experience for all parties involved. And then she kept telling me to, like, personally hold my thighs as well, even though they're, like, pushing my thighs back, me to hold it and bear down. Um, and every time I got to, um, do that, I felt my arms just fall. Like, I couldn't think about holding my thighs and pushing and holding my breath. It was a lot going on. Because in my head, I was like, okay, don't hold your breath to push. Because that's how people would be busting their blood vessels in their eyes. And, you know, TikTok said, that's not how you push. So now I have TikTok in my head. This lady that I'm staring at in front of me with her arms crossed. She's waiting on me to. She's like, mm-mm, that's not going to do it. And I said... That's not motivating for me. So I need to look at someone else because she was not motivating me. And you can see it in the video that her arms were crossed. They said it's for sterile purposes, but it made me feel some type of way in the moment. Okay? So. I pushed for 20 minutes and then I had a bouncing baby boy. And as soon as they put him on my chest, I was expecting to feel, you know, the serendipity of the moment as people, they are no longer aware of what's going on down there. I still felt everything. I just remember I kept saying, get his cord off of my vagina, like get it off. I don't know why for some reason it was just irritating me to feel, I was like, move it out the way. And then I had a second degree tear. So I felt the stitching of that happening. So I kept jerking my legs. So she's like, okay, let me give you some lidocaine. She was like, I know it's just a reaction because you're not, you're not saying you're in pain. But yeah, let me give you some lidocaine. So when she took that needle, that needle was this big. <laughs> I said, where's that going? <laughs> and she just put it in there, stitched me up. She said, Quan, come look. She said, Daddy, come look. <laughs> and I said, well, what does it look like? How's it doing? He said, pretty good. <laughs> so... All in all, we had a great time. And uh, I would do it again. Would do it again. But I need at least two years to recover mentally, spiritually, and physically. Um, but yeah, guys. So, all in all, I couldn't even tell you how many hours of labor that was. Whatever from 10 p.m. Monday to he was born at 12.16 on the 20th. All of that labor in 20 minutes of pushing for my first kid I feel like we did pretty good especially because I wouldn't count my labor until I got to four centimeters and after because that was the real active labor and the contractions were two to three minutes consistently so yeah if you guys have any other questions um if I could clarify anything you leave a comment down below and I will respond to you thank you to everybody new here for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Join the fam. We got a long journey ahead of us because this boy is only two weeks old and we've done so much. I know you can hear him. It's it's about time to eat now. So too bright for you, honey. Put your hood on. Bye -bye. Wow. <laughs> You look like the boy on um those kids from the proud, proud family. Mm -hmm. You like a dancing peanut. So all those hours of labor and 20 minutes of pushing for this bouncing baby boy. The lights are getting to him, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this <laughs> short. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, any advice you wanna leave, not that I'll take it, but <laughs> Leave it down below. I'll be sure to respond or at least heart it so that you know that I'm looking. Um, be sure to subscribe to our channel. He's only two weeks, so we have a long journey ahead of us. So, yeah, stay tuned. Have a popping day.